States are expected to lean into their emergency savings in the coming months as coronavirus takes its toll on the economy. States across the country ended the 2019 fiscal year with record levels of savings and widespread budgetary surpluses, but those reserves and rainy day funds are quickly being put to the test as the ongoing coronavirus pandemic stretches state resources and grinds economic activity across the country to a halt. States ended fiscal year 2019 with enough in their rainy day funds to cover a median of nearly 28 days of government operational expenses, according to recent data published by the Pew Charitable Trusts. That's the largest number of days that Pew has on record, going back to the 2001 fiscal year. Red, Gov. Lamont, Connecticut is out of medical supplies from the national stockpile but reserves varied widely. Resource-rich states such as Wyoming, Alaska and North Dakota boasted the largest proportional budgetary reserves and would each be able to run for more than 100 days just on their rainy day funds. At nearly 400 days, Wyoming could go more than a year just on its emergency reserves. A report published on Wednesday by the Tax Foundation made similar findings. Wyoming, Alaska, North Dakota and New Mexico were identified as the states with the biggest reserves proportional to their government obligations. In both Tax Foundation and Pew data, Kansas and Illinois have the smallest rainy day funds. Per the Tax Foundation's report, Kansas only established a rainy day fund in 2016 and wasn't planning to begin filling it until fiscal year 2020. As such, the fund still stands empty, according to the report. Pennsylvania and New Jersey are only slightly above this level, each with savings to cover 1% of their annual expenditures. The coronavirus pandemic has forced the federal government to push back the national tax filing deadline from mid-April to mid-July. State governments have widely followed suit, delaying revenues they'd collect on personal and business taxes by several weeks. The coronavirus outbreak is also straining state health and welfare resources, as non-essential businesses close, unemployment spikes and tens of thousands of Americans fall ill. Increases in unemployment will boost spending on unemployment insurance and make more people eligible for Medicaid, both of which state governments help finance, a team of researchers at the Brookings Institution wrote in a state budget-focused blog post on March 23, noting that states will undoubtedly tap their rainy day funds to help cushion the blow of the pandemic. New York State Comptroller Thomas DiNapoli last month estimated the Empire State's tax revenues for the 2020 fiscal year would fall $4 billion as a direct result of the coronavirus. In a worst-case scenario, revenues could drop by more than $7 billion. In a letter addressed to Gov. Andrew Cuomo, DiNapoli said ongoing uncertainty about how long the virus will keep the state on lockdown, in combination with the adjusted tax filing timeline, raises concerns about the state's cash flow over the course of the next several months. The current economic challenge serves as a reminder that the state must make a firm and ongoing commitment to strengthening its rainy day reserves, he said. New York ranked in the bottom 10 of both the Pew and Tax Foundation rainy day analyses. Now the epicenter of the outbreak in the U.S., the Empire State's Rainy Day Fund would only cover about 10 days of government expenses. From an emergency reserve standpoint, only seven states are in worse shape than New York. Some of those states who had even smaller reserves than New York, including New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Illinois, are dealing with significant outbreaks of their own. These four are among the 10 states with the most coronavirus diagnoses to date, according to data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. More than 203,000 Americans have tested positive for the disease, according to the latest projections from Johns Hopkins University. More than 4,400 Americans have died. Federal lawmakers have sought to extend lifelines to states that have been swamped with diagnoses and unemployment claims, directing $150 billion to state governments across the country in the most recent congressional coronavirus aid legislation. New York will receive more than $7.5 billion in support, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Earlier in March, lawmakers increased the federal share of Medicaid to lighten states' fiscal load. Red, red states get better return on taxpayer dollars, study says, but governors are calling for more support as cases continue to climb, and experts warn that states that weren't already standing on solid financial footing could be forced to make difficult budgetary decisions in the months ahead.
Lower taxes and increased demands for funding will impose severe strains on state and local budgets, the Brookings researchers wrote. Furthermore, with most state fiscal years ending June 30, and with most states required to enact budgets that they expect to balance, it is likely that state and local governments will start paring back spending relatively soon.